Senator Bond for all his hard work and other members of the Intelligence Committee, and I hope we can very soon pass a good FISA bill on the floor. But I want to deviate from that debate for a second to talk about a headline that many of you read yesterday uh, that you're reading repeatedly around the United States of America, and that's the rapid increase in the number of houses going into foreclosure. And I want to address it in the context of economic stimulus, in the context of the possibility of recessionary tendencies in the economy, and also a historical perspective that we've been down this road before, and the Senate and the co Congress could take and the White House could endorse, that could avoid, uh, avoid an awful lot of foreclosures, improve the housing market, reverse the tendencies toward recession, and be a private sector solution to a problem that's going to be a tremendous burden if we don't act. Now, I understand the short-term surgical benefits of the stimulus that was passed by the House, the other benefits that the Finance Committee passed, and we'll work ourselves through that in the next few weeks, and shortly American people will more than likely be receiving a check of $300 or more dollars in which to infuse some energy back into the economy. But while that's going on, Mr. President, these numbers of 200 and 300 percent increases of houses going into foreclosure are going to materialize as houses in foreclosure. And we get into the second quarter of this year and the middle of the summer, we're going to find ourselves in a difficult situation where the following has happened. A tremendous number of houses have been foreclosed on. The banks and lenders take them back in inventory, and there's a term, it's called REO, real estate owned. The regulators are going to come in and look at their books, and they're going to tell them to get rid of that inventory. The lenders are going to write them down, and they're going to take them to the marketplace with deep discount, and they're going to sell them. And what's that's going to do to your homeowners that uh, Jim Weikert sells in New Jersey, mine in Georgia that Harry Norman sells, uh, those from all around the country, is that those people who are in houses making their payments and they're in good shape, their value is going to plummet because of the number of foreclosures that float on the market. When that plummets, what happens is the equity, the difference between their existing mortgage and the value of the house decreases because the value of the house goes down. And if they are like 87% of the American people who have an equity line, line of credit where they use the equity in their house as a line of credit, if you will, you're going to squeeze their available credit. And you know what's going to happen, Mr. President? They're going to stop spending. You know what happens when that happens? You have the full pressure of the economy in a downward spiral, and it begins to feed upon itself. This is precisely what happened in 1975. In 1973 and early four, there was a great housing boom in the United States of America, just like we've had over most of the last decade. And just like what happened over the most of the last decade with subprime loans and underwriting, back in 1974, money got awfully loose. Banks made loans with very little underwriting criteria. And we had a plethora of new homes built all over the United States by newfound home builders who had a hammer, a pickup truck, and easy credit. And we found ourselves at the beginning of 1975 with a three-year supply of vacant housing on the market in the United States of America. A viable real estate market is a six-month supply. So you had six times the volume of houses that would be considered a balanced market. We went into a deep recessionary spiral. A Democratic Congress and a Republican president passed a $6,000 tax credit available to any family that purchased a standing vacant house in inventory and allowed them to collect that credit over three years, the three succeeding tax years after the year of their purchase. And the only thing they had to do other than qualify for the loan, and they had to qualify under good underwriting standards, is they had to occupy the home as their residence. In a one-year time, we absorbed a two-year supply of housing and returned the housing market to balance. The economy stabilized, although we had the impacts of the Arab oil embargo that were taking, causing problems on inflation, the economy turned to a relatively stable time period. I, along with a number of members of the Senate, have introduced legislation, Senate Bill 2566, which takes that model from 1975 and applies it to our problem in 2008. What it very simply does is it offers a tax credit of $15,000 for the purchase of any house that falls in the following category. A new house permitted before September 1st of last year that's standing and vacant. A house owned by a lender that was foreclosed on in the last 12 months from an owner-occupant. And any house pending foreclosure owned by an owner-occupant owner who is willing to sell. That's where all this inventory that's beginning to flood our market comes from. The tax credit would be available 
if purchase was made between March 1 of this year and February 29th of next year. So there's a one-year window to incentivize those who might be reluctant to go in the marketplace to do so. Now, joint tax has scored this, Mr. President. And guess what the score is? $9,600,000,000 over five years. Now, put that in the context of the stimulus package that's before us of $150 to $160 billion. It is a relatively small inducement to provide a private sector to solution which, to what is about to become to the taxpayers of the United States of America and this government. So I come to the floor at this time in hopes that some of our colleagues who have not found an interest in this legislation yet will take a look at it. Uh, as the author, it's not original thought. I just happened to have been a real estate broker in 1975, trying to hang on and make a living to educate my three children. And I saw my government come to the rescue of the housing economy through energizing people to go in and purchase houses that were in trouble rather than bail them out somewhere down the line. And it worked. And the cost to the government was infinitesimal, yet the benefit to the public was astronomical. So I hope as we finish talking about a surgical, strategic, short-term stimulus to get the consumer buying, which is what we're talking about in terms of either the Senate Finance Committee bill or the House bill, we take a look at what's coming. Because believe me, in July of this year, if we do nothing, we're going to, dealing, we're going to be dealing with a housing supply in this country bigger than it has ever been, vacant houses by the thousands in neighborhoods, declining values on the value of housing, and people who are in good shape are going to not be able to either have their equity line of credit work or be able to move their house in the marketplace because of the tremendous inventory that's available. History is a great teacher, both in terms of things you should never repeat, but also in terms of things that worked and you ought to repeat again. I would submit that the tax credit to qualified purchasers to purchase and occupy a troubled house in this economy is an incentive that will work not only for the betterment of the market, but for the betterment of our economy and the best interests of the United States of America. Senate Bill 2566 is an opportunity for us to join together and do something good and right for the American people. And I yield back. President, Senator from Rhode Island. Mr. President, I would ask him to consent to speak as